So this week I can guarantee you there's not going to be any footage taken from this camera. Nope. <laughs> Everybody, it is July 19th on this beautiful hot and muggy uh, Wednesday. Last week I was complaining that summer was gone. Summer's back along with the humidity. I'm not complaining. <laughs> I'd rather have that. Okay, so um, I never know how to start this, so I'm just going to go ahead and plunge right in. I want to show you... Oh! Big news, well, big news for me. I've actually finished two journals. Two journals. Uh, well, actually, yeah, one is just missing one page. I guess it's not finished. Okay, we can't say that. But I finished one journal. It is my Strathmore uh, Series 400 watercolor journal. And why don't I show you right away what I made in it. Um, those that follow my process video, of course, you will have seen this. But this was my latest project. This lady that I have painted. Um, it's somewhere between June, because this was the previous page. This was done on July 2nd. That was last year. It's so funny how your style evolves with practice. And then I did this on my birthday, which is September 8th. So, yeah, somewhere in between that. And one year later, I revisited it, revisited it, <laughs> and I used my pretties, my petite pretties. I love this page so much. It was so much fun to do. Um, the face, there was nothing absolutely wrong with it. It's just that while I was doing it, I wasn't happy with it, and I let the water drip, and I kind of like didn't carry the color the way I liked it, I guess. And so I just left it and... Figured, you know, one day maybe, but maybe not. Actually, I never really had the intention of uh, going back to her, but I did. And... Oh, should I show you that? Because it's next week's video. Oh, but I want it because I like it. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll show it to you, but very briefly. I'm not going to explain. It's watercolor, of course, because that's watercolor journal, but this is the page that I made. Okay, you've seen it. <laughs> but it's it's literally the last page in my book. And I, so I have completed, so far, three full watercolor journals. And my little moleskin one, which is the very first one that I've ever bought, uh, I think... I can't remember the date that I purchased it, but the first time I used it was in June 2014, which is kind of odd. Because in 2014, I was not into watercolor, but I remember I did it with the Gansai Tambi watercolor set that I had purchased at the time. So, uh, yeah, I guess that was the very first watercolor set that I've ever purchased, which is kind of cool. And let me show you what I did. So I did, I did not film these, but actually I just posted a very quick um, video on the second page because I have something to show you. Okay, so we'll segue into that one, I guess. So let me see here. Okay, so um, over the weekend I did a little watercolor painting. Uh, I always swatch my <laughs> colors on the other page, but this is what I did. So I... I wanted to have, I wanted to see if I could contrast modern uh, architecture with medieval. And this is what I came up with. And, you know, there's nothing really absolutely wrong with this, except that I used too many colors and I wasn't happy because of that. I mean, it's, it's cute and all, but, uh, and the tents, there's something missing, and so... Then I researched it. See, I do everything backwards. Instead of going online, finding some reference material, because I never drew circus dance or tents whatsoever, um, I kind of guesstimate as to what they should look like, but you can't have a door like this. Tents don't have doors this way. <laughs> but uh, anyways, and you'll see in the next page, I kind of redid that. But it's still fun, but I don't like the doodles in there. So I kind of like did some sort of a mock-up petite pretties around that painting, which is fine. But then 
I did this one and I like it so much. So that's the second one I did and now it totally works because I have used a limited palette of colors and here's how I swatch my colors by the way. Um, so for this I used the my beloved <laughs> Mission Gold by Mijello. I always say beloved because it was given to me by a friend of mine which is anyway. Um, so yes and wherever I have the color written are the colors that I actually use for this painting and I love it I think it's fun very whimsical the light does not okay so I think you can see a bit of let me see you're gonna see my open pores but yeah it's kind of flashed out if I turn it sideways it's a little bit better but I have used gold on this Ah, I'm sorry guys, that's the disadvantage of not using the overhead camera, but I will post a picture on Instagram. There is a small video on it. Uh, I just posted a few minutes earlier, but the reason why... I'm trying, I'm trying, it's not working. The reason why I wanted you to see the full picture is because I have... <laughs> okay, so my next topic is my pens <laughs> because I'm into sketching a lot lately I'm also into outlining uh, with markers and stuff and I've been particularly affectionating, affectionating <laughs> liking the Le Pens uh, last year I think I ordered a whole bunch of Le Pens markers from Jet Pens and I love the gray but where is it Yes, I have found a gold pen. Oh my God. Gold! I wish I, I I wish I knew someone who does animation so that every time I mention the word gold, the word gold, I have like a with a gold star trailing across the screen. This pen, this pen, this pen, my friend. Okay. Um, can you see that? I'm not sure. Okay, well, whichever. Trust me. This is the Uniball Signal Gold Gel Pen. And when you apply the gold with this, like when you actually write, this is the same brand that does the big famous white gel pen that everybody uses that always misses. Um, I'm having a hard time with the white Signal gel pens, but this, it's like, the gold flows. It's like a river of gold with shimmer flows. I'm I'm almost tearing up. I kid you not. It is so amazing. Um, let me see if I can swatch. Hold on. I'm going to try and do something to you without having to have that camera. Okay. <sighs> Calm down, Cece. Calm down. Okay, so... Oh, see, oh, 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 very briefly. Anyways, trust me when I say this, go out and buy one. <laughs> I usually say, don't go out and buy one just because I said so, but this is incredible, and I'm sure it's not that expensive. Uh, I got it in a sampler, so I don't know how much it costs individually. But anyway, so what I did was, <laughs> you're going to think I'm fanatic, but... I've had a few of these for many, many years, but I have actually took out all the gold pens that I have. <laughs> I'm a little shy to show you this, but these are all the gold pens that I have in my stash. And like I said, like this, I don't even think they still make it. This was made by American Crafts. Uh, it's called Metallic Marker. I don't think they make them anymore, but what I did is swatch them all behind this journal that I use these are this is um I used to use this as a bullet journal this is um oh what's it called Leuchtturm, something like that uh the squared pages because a couple of years ago I was into um bullet journaling not a couple of years last year actually <clears throat> anyways I'm not using it as such I'm using it as a book where I 
write down my notes. I always plan my vlogs, <laughs> although they don't seem to be too planned. But <clears throat> anyways, in the back, I did a sampler of the gold pens that I own. And I will take a picture of this and I will insert it at the end in case you are interested. And I also got a few samples of turquoise pens because I like that color too. And uh, also included the ones that I have. Most of them were from Jet Pens. So there you go. So, and the one that's really, uh, the one that I'm in love with, and I think I'm going to try and order a few of them. I'm not sure if they're super expensive, but I try not to order <laughs> online ever. Well, A, I don't really need anything except gold, but um, I was nabbed with a customs bill from my last order from Jet Pens because I wanted to, because I'm running out of watercolor journals, I wanted to order another watercolor journal. And it cost me $28 Canadian in custom charges. So, anyways, let's not try to do this too often. But this one, the Pilot um, GTEx C4, oh my goodness, it is actually 0.4 millimeter. I don't even think that you can see the tip of this. <laughs> it is so small, so tiny. And it just makes the most oh, glorious tiny line. So like I said, I'm going to insert that uh, at the end as um, a picture so that you can look at it and in case you're interested. All right, moving on. <laughs> Got to clean up a little bit. I'm limited now because I only have one table here. So, Okay, so you have seen this and you have seen this. Done. Sorry. All right, I have also, when I ordered my watercolor journal, ordered two brushes. Uh, one of them um, is a silver brush and I have seen, who is the artist? There's a girl that does videos for Prima, you know, Prima marketing. Um, and I saw on Instagram that she was doing these amazing flowers with this triangular brush. That's what it's called anyways. It's called a, uh, well, I got it in the size extra small, but this is silver ruby satin triangle brush. And it's still brand new, but check out this tip. This is so funky. Look at this, see how, here, isn't that cool? So I'm anxious to try this, excited, not anxious. Anxious has a bad connotation, right? Or negative, okay, so I'm excited to try this. And the other one is a brush similar to the one that I was using, I think last week in my video, which is this one here. And I have information on this because I've received a few questions, but this one is a Pentel brush. And it's a tad smaller than the one that I was using. And you'll have to apologize. Uh -huh. You'll have to excuse me. Sometimes I speak weird because uh, one of my tooth chipped, and I went to the dentist yesterday to get it temporarily fixed. I need a cap. Ugh. Anyway, so yes, this is the Pentel brush F F D M. 5-1 and again it's a super small tip quite fine and apparently a lot of people that do like detailed illustrations or anime or whatever they use that and it's the same principle it's a hollowed out brush just like the one I was using so I'm looking forward to um, do this and probably next week I'll have a review on that for you Speaking of brushes, this brush that I was using last week, I found, uh, actually I didn't find, JC did for me. <laughs> she came to my rescue once again. Uh, let me see here. Um, because I opened the page so that I can actually talk about it. 
Okay, it is, or it looks exactly like this, but the equivalent online would be a Kuretake Zig Cartoonist Horse and Goat Hair Menso Brush Fine. Uh, it's very similar. The tip is not exactly the same, but it's quite similar. I have received a few links, so what I'll do is I'll include also the links in the description so that you can go and check that out. I have made this for my patrons last week because it was their ten. It was for the ten dollars plus pledges, um, and I always try and develop a technique for them at that level. And I was using uh, ink tent pencils. And that was just so much fun to do. And while I was doing this, I gave him a lot of information and whatnot. Actually, here I can show you this. Hold on a minute. I'm going to dive down. Ta da! Oops. <laughs> I hope I didn't scare you. So, when I do a technique for them, I always include like a cheat sheet. And, um,. That's what I made for them. So I went through a whole bunch of exercises, different applications, different ways to use them. And uh, that's also included in their their post as reference material. All right, you go back down there. And uh, while I was doing some research on the ink tense pencils, I have found out that you can actually use them on fabric, any natural fabric. So I did a little swatch on here um, on canvas fabric. And at the time that I swatched it, it was still bleeding a little bit because it was still damp, actually. So I put it in the dryer, and now it's completely water-resistant. In fact, I have a spray bottle here. Let me spray that for you. <laughs> so I'm going to saturate this. Like, oof, It's actually... <laughs> the water is actually moving on it. And yeah, there's no color whatsoever. This thing is like totally permanent. Oop. Okay, I don't want to do this over my original painting because that goes to one of the, my patrons. Okay, so there you go. You can use your ink tense pencils and blocks. I'm assuming it's the same thing uh, on fabric. I heard that it works really well on cotton and silk. Yes. I have found another rose gold paint I just want to look at my notes for a sec yes rose gold paint this one is deco art as well but the extreme sheen da -da -da -da. <laughs> I swatched it here it is sheen <laughs> extreme <laughs> extremely sheened but and yeah it's rose gold I guess yeah I guess you can say it's rose gold, but I have discovered that Daniel Smith has kind of like a rose gold color in their swatch card that I have bought recently, and so it would be Iridescent Sunstone, which is this color. Check it out. So, guess who's going to go and buy something tomorrow? I know, but I, I got to. I have to. I swatched it a little bit, but it's difficult to pick up a good portion of the um, the pigment from the swatch card without flooding everything else around it. So I kind of swatched it a little bit, but uh, it's right here. I mean, it, it's definitely golden and rose. So uh, yeah, I'm very anxious to excited. I keep saying anxious. Uh, the Deco Art Rose Gold Extreme Sheen takes a long time to dry because it's still sticky and I've done my swatching about four hours ago. And so, yeah. Back down you go. All right. Here's the watercolor journal that I bought. I'm excited to try this one because I've heard people say good things about it. It is the Fluid Watercolor Paper 8x8 8 8, 140 pound weight journal. And it has a wire bound with I'm which I'm not crazy about but when I realized that in my other journals I always do like the swatch on the left hand side and my painting on the right hand side it doesn't really bother me anymore I mean you know I could show you the inside but it looks pretty plain to me it's a white paper uh, but I, I like there's definitely sizing in the back um, I like the texture of it 
it's a tiny bit different. It, it feels more cottony than the Strathmore. And it's cold press. Um, that's all, that's about all I know. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. So I will swatch this. I guess I will swatch my brushes at the same time, but I'm quite excited about that. Sorry about the noise. And um, there's a couple of other pens that I received as a gift that I will swatch at the same time. Well, you know what? Hmm. Let me do that now. Um, have you ever heard of these? The Pilot Juice Pens? I haven't. Wanna try? Of course, I need a dark paper for this. Let me just grab something black. There's no paper in this house. <laughs> All right. Uh, while I'm shaking this, let me show you the other one that I got. This is a touch pen. It's written in Japanese. Who made this? Pentel. And I have this brush. Koretake. Again. It looks like it's a like a fine felt tip or even a plastic. Maybe it's plastic tip. All right. I'm not looking up there. There's no camera live up there. <laughs> um, um, I while I'm doing this because it's going to take a while. It looks like I have made more pretties. Of course. I'm so addicted and what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to show them to you totally at the end so for those of you who are not into pretties or don't really want to see a whole bunch of cards one after the other uh, you can skip it I'll keep it for the end okay let's do this yeah oh ooh. all right because oh, I want to see how they compare to the um, uh, uni Posca. So this is the pilot juice pen. I don't think it's a paint pen, honestly, because the ink. I mean, it's nice, but the ink kind of sinks into the paper. Let me grab my uni Posca. This one is a bullet tip, though might give the wrong the the uh, a different yeah I don't think that the pilot is a paint pen I think it's just like a pigment pen maybe because you can see the difference but not bad it's free not bad at all uh, this is the touch something something by Pentel oh okay so the tip is quite pointy. Uh, maybe it is a felt pen. Let me swatch this for you. Oh, oh. You can uh, you can actually do thick and thin with this because the tip is quite flexible. Sorry, you can't see what I'm doing. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've written better, but see the difference? Yeah, I don't know what kind of tip this is, like the, the size of it, but it's pretty cool. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I have my Pentel brush, the, uh, the one with the, um, the synthetic fibers, and I quite like it. Ooh, oh, this is a Tombow, the two-way Tombow. Yeah. Everybody knows about the Tombow. See, if I'm going to do like this style of writing, whoops, uh, I would probably reach for a Tombow just because they have a lot of colors. And there's like a bullet tip, of course. And I find that, you know, for the price, you get like two different tips. And I think that's a good investment. 
I have a whole bunch. These are my... What are they called? Tombo. <laughs> okay. I use that for my journaling in my uh, Hobonichi. All right. So the last one I want to swatch for you. I hope this is not too long, but maybe some of you are interested in that. This, I'm very intrigued. This is uh, the Koretaki something blah, 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 because <laughs> it's all written in Japanese. There's a big name right there. I don't know what it means. Uh, oh, and the tip is quite fine. I'm assuming it's blue. I don't know. Nope. It's actually black. The tip is slightly flexible. Okay, I did not apply myself, but... So this is uh, normal pressure, and then I try to do thick and thins, and I totally failed, but... Cool. The thing with these pens, though, is that if you apply too much pressure when you do your downstrokes, it starts to... You know, it'll get deformed, <laughs> and I don't want that, so... I would probably use this just for writing, I guess, the normal way. <sighs> cool. All right, I wouldn't necessarily rush out and buy any of these. Maybe the Tombow, but that's just that would be just to add to my collection. I don't have the black one, so that's fine. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you are my new pretties. <laughs> uh, so for those that are not interested in them, you can just quit watching. And thanks for joining us. <laughs> I'll see you next week. And um, here they are. I've got to quit it. Another big stash. I just love making them, and so. I'll stop apologizing because I know many of you are addicted to them. So I'm just going to show them to you like very quickly. A lot of them are shimmer. A lot of them have, um, what's it called? I added stickles to some of them. They're all different patterns. Very fun. There's no, s oh yeah, there's a little bit of stickles on the background, but this is like diamond stickles. You can kind of see it when I when I turn the card. These have a gold dotty background. Little flecks of gold. Here again, there's some stickle in the centers of these. They're so cool. And I didn't write any sentiments just because I don't know where they're gonna end up, uh, you know, or for what purpose I should say. I like this one a lot. I love brown and pink. So cool. This one is quite different, but I like it. See the... Uh, show the stickles, please. Yeah, you can kind of see it. But each of them have stickles on them. But I like it. The colors are not vibrant, but they're fun. Here's another one with the same kind of style. <laughs> Uh, what was I doing before I discovered the pretties? <laughs> I had to think, you know, like, this is all born out of recycling. Uh, I really want you to see the stickles. It's difficult to show. This one is quite funky. <laughs> Spotted pretties. <laughs> Fun, you know? <laughs> this kind of reminds me more of masculine cards I guess because there's a background of black dots these are my snow pretties <laughs> I like to make stories of stuff <laughs> about the things that I do there's always a story to everything Ugh, it's so difficult to show you this one I love it's got you can see the the shimmer from the stickles but it's a mix of white dots and gold stickles. Really pretty, I find. Another snow pretty. And the last one. This one, this one's fun too. <laughs> I call this my, my Sputnik. <laughs> if you're old like me, you know that one of the very first satellite that was launched in space was a Russian satellite and it was called Sputnik but uh, I don't know why it reminds me of this ah. and this one this one has a lot of movement <laughs> but it's fine you know 
so that was it for my pretties and that's pretty much it uh pretty much all that i wanted to show you next week i'll have more stuff and uh lucy sent me some fudge from england vanilla clotted cream fudge and uh, lucy what have you done to me and please don't bring more. <laughs> um, she'll be here in two weeks, actually less than two weeks. So I'm so looking forward to that. Uh, before I leave you, I need to ask you if you know of a good trick to get rid of acrylic paint on a canvas, <laughs> especially if there's a text paper underneath. I still haven't painted my water lily canvas or painted over it. It still sits in my dining room and parts of it has been ripped apart because there's text paper underneath and sometimes it bubbles up if I add water and so I started ripping that and now I have a big white hole <laughs> at the bottom <laughs> and the rest is gray and it's staring me in the face still. Ugh. Anyway, so if if you know of a trick that can get rid of probably four layers of paint so I can get at that paper underneath. I've, I've been trying to spray from underneath, like literally lifting the text paper that's peeling off partially because it doesn't go very far and it's lifting the paint but of course the paint is very elast elastic key? Yeah, because it's plastic acrylic paint is plastic and so I've been shooting water in between the text paper and the canvas so that I can rip but the problem is there's the text paper is not all over the canvas and the text paper by the way was my very first layer that's what I did I applied the text paper with gel medium directly onto the canvas and then I started painting over that but for some reason I guess because I did not apply the gel medium evenly on the text paper I remember when I first started painting it, it was kind of like bubbling up in some spots and it just keeps doing that and it's really annoying. And so that's why I want to get rid of all that. <laughs> it's not because I have so many layers of paint, it's because I have that text paper underneath which is driving me crazy. <sighs> Anyways, <laughs> I'll figure it out eventually. You know me, I'll figure it out. Probably in two years, but I will. Anyways, that's it for today. I hope that... Um, this vlog was into something. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below and I will see you later. Bye!